Thank you very much. We have to leave you there for the moment. You are watching Dialogue with Mr. Oliver Stone, the three-time Academy Award-winning director, producer, and screenwriter. We'll be back in a few minutes. Shipping Hub in Northeast Asia, reaching the world from Northeast China, Port of Dandong. Keeping the Shenzhou spacecraft in orbit, keeping your equipment running longer. Challenges that spur Sinopec lubricants to higher levels of excellence. Providing protection at aerospace level Sinopec lubricants. We lead. Others follow for expansion that's sustainable. Zhongnan Group, China's global new city developer. Welcome back, gentlemen. This year marks the 35th anniversary of the border clash between China and Vietnam. Now, the word Vietnam must weigh heavily in the mind and heart of uh, many Americans, uh, particularly for a filmmaker like you. Uh, you are the filmmaker of a trilogy like, uh, uh, what, what do you call the uh, uh, Born on the Earth, of July. Uh, Platoon, as well as uh, uh, Born on 4th of July. Uh, why, why do you criticize uh, the Vietnam War? <laughs> because there was a, uh, we sent 500,000 troops to Southeast Asia to fight what we thought was uh, a communist uh, takeover of the South. If we studied the history correctly, it wasn't that story at all. It was a story of the South and the North trying to find unification mm -hmm. after World War II when they had defeated the colonialism of the, of the Japanese and then they, they fought the French. After the French defeat, the Vietnamese wanted unity, and, they, and Ho Chi Minh would have won the election in 1955. Eisenhower and the Americans prevented that election, which led to the American involvement there in the 1960s. I became involved as a young man. But uh, we left uh, Vietnam, we left behind, uh, it's very well known. Excuse me, what was your belief when you first went to the I United States? I believe that we were fighting communism. I grew up in New York City under the belief that China and Russia were combined Mm -hmm. to defeat the United States in a worldwide conspiracy in, in communism, which is what the Korean War, I was told, was about. When I went to Vietnam, we left behind 59,000 dead, but the Vietnamese, we never were told the damage to Vietnam. We now have found out from, uh, in the 1990s, we found out that approximately three and a half million Vietnamese were killed in this war. Through carpet bombings, for example. There was bombings, carpet bombings also of, the, of Laos and Cambodia. It was a huge devastation, it was a genocide essentially. But uh, no one knows these figures. The American ch uh, children, uh, school children grow up thinking about Vietnam as still as a complicated situation in which America was neutralized, but they don't really learn about the casualties and the devastation that occurred to the South and the North. Three and a half million, I repeat, they know the number of Jews that were killed in World War II, but they do not know that three and a half million Vietnamese died in that conflict, which was unnecessary conflict initiated by the United States, not by Vietnam. Can you, can so you I just want to say it's a big point because what happens is when you distort history, it starts to lose its meaning. Now, what's happened in America is since under Ronald Reagan in 1980, he said that war was not a disgrace. It was a, a, an honorable thing. It, that, that position has been backed by Clinton, by Bush uh, and Obama. Let me cite uh, what and President Obama says. At the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War in 2012, Obama reflected on the war with uh, solemn reverence upon the valor of a generation that served with honor and initiated a 13-year program to pay tribute to the men and women who answered the call of duty with courage and valor. When Vietnam vets came back, they were reviled. Why is the Vietnam War being glorified now? Well, this is precisely the problem. If, when you forget the history, when you don't study the history of the Vietnam War, which we did in our untold history of the United States, and you see what, what we did over there, and you forget that, 
Then you go back and you do it again in Iraq, you do it again in Kuwait, you do it again in Afghanistan. We've had one tragedy after the other. Foreign policy in the United States has been a disaster around the world, in my belief. But you said our domestic policy, at one point earlier you said domestic policy is apart from that, but there, it isn't apart from no, that. No, 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 I, I you, separated you get a domestic, very bad politics, domestic no, policy. No, I separated domestic politics from the, a U.S. foreign policy. I don't think policy. you can separate it. I think the foreign policy has a lot to do with the U.S. domestic policy. From your perspective, uh, what is American exceptionalism? Do you think you can yeah, stand above all others? Well, of course. That's, uh, you know, it's a founding belief. Uh, it's a, almost a religious belief. It, it came over with the Puritans that this was a new land. They were leaving a sick Europe to found a new religion where God and paradise, it was a beautiful country and they had oceans on both sides, prote big protective oceans. It's easy perhaps to believe that you were a, you know, a, a chosen people. However, you know, the Indians were there first, and uh, they, the Indian wars are brutal, and uh, we wiped out the aboriginal population, essentially, and we also in, 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 we instituted slavery in the New World. So it wasn't a, a blissful beginning. It was a very difficult beginning. And the American Civil War results as a, uh, because of the slavery issues dividing uh, our country. Uh, so the country from the beginning was stained with uh, a certain darkness, but we don't learn that in depth. We don't learn that in school, which is why I try to make a point about history all over the world. We have to learn history correctly. So the American history has been sanitized, made into a Walt Disney film, where it's not as dark and horrible as it can be. Uh, and, st and I think school children like that. They want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear lies. And I, I think this is part of the problem in all countries. I think after World War II, the United States went into kind of a, a lie about World War II, too. It was never really presented properly that the Soviet Union had beaten the, the uh, German uh, military in World War II. Very important. Mm -hmm. So what lessons can be drawn from the Korean War and the Vietnam War and the war on Iraq and the war on Afghanistan? The Korean War has never been six, examined. Over 6,000 American GIs were killed in Afghanistan to fight Osama bin Laden. Yeah. Well, every one of these, uh, you, know, you have to go into a history. I can't just shoot it. But, but, they but the Korean volunteers. War is a secret. I mean, it's a hidden war still. Mm -hmm. The Chinese fought the Americans. The Chinese lost apparently close to a million men in, in the Korean War. It's an amazing story. Why? You, know, and you have to go into the fear the United States had of China in those years because it was a new country, 1949, you know, and all yeah. of a sudden uh, the United States was so anti-Chinese with the McCarthy era, the anti-communist fervor. You know, uh, the U.S. lost to China in 1949 after three years civil strife, and the U.S. runs the risk of losing China once again because, uh, well, you, you know, that's lose why... China. Why do you say lose China? They never had China. I mean, why do we think we had it so we well, had to we, lose it? We are the top creditor, overseas creditor of the U.S. economy. Yes. And uh, yeah. our, our market is the fastest growing overseas market for right. the U.S. products. Right. 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 Now, when President Xi Jinping visited the U.S. last year, calling for President Obama to form what he calls the uh, new model of major power relationship, the essence of which is uh, no conflict, no confrontation, mutual respect and co-prosperity. That'd be great. Now, that'd be great. That would be great, except but the United States has instituted a policy of a pivot towards Asia. Uh, Hillary Clinton has uh, made that announcement that the, United St that the 21st century would be America's Pacific century. She said that. Obama has reinforced that. The Secretary of Defense has come over here. You know the United States is endorsed a policy of containment in your commemoration, China. In your commemoration of the two nuclear bombs being dropped to uh, il Atomic il level uh, the uh, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, you, were critical, you were critical of the uh, Japanese government, saying they never showed real and genuine repentance for the war atrocities. Uh, yeah. Now, the U.S. vows to take side with the Japanese ally in case uh, yeah. uh, the Island uh, went, <laughs> went around. But now, let us look at the, the Yasukuni Shrine. Mr. Shinzo Abe, a very close friend of the U.S. government, uh, paid tribute to War Dead. And the War Dead, well, that's a controversial issue, but the most controversial is 14 Class A war criminals who are shrined there, I mean, uh, protected there, honored there. So what do you think of uh, this, uh, uh, this flashpoint that uh, threatens to trigger a war between the two major economies, the, f the second and the third by biggest economies in the world? This is very dangerous, and the United States has participated in raising the tension level in East in Asia by supporting the Japanese government, the South Korean government, the Philippine government, the Vietnamese government, military alliances abound. The United States is serious about containment. 
and I fear, and it worries about the emergence of China as a rival. This is a neoconservative policy. The United States has supported Japan's basically single-party government since the end of World War II, financed it, supported it. It's a satellite. Japan has never, never learned the lessons of World War II. Japan was very aggressive all through Asia in the, in the 20th century, and in the World War II, you know, went into every country. Uh, with, uh, with, and, uh, and the, the Japanese the, the, refused the murder to murder rate, take. the rape rate, the, the, the theft of all the treasures from China, Korea, Burma, Indonesia. It's an amazing story. And the United States, of course, buried this. Oliver, you know, you are respected and criticized uh, for proposing to have a co-production with the Chinese counterpart about the your, your Chinese counterpart about cultural revolution. Now, uh, tell, us, tell me more about your brainchild for having this uh, co-production. Uh, what is your proposal? Well, I think that what, you know, co-productions are tricky because you have actors who are sometimes speaking in the second language, so mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't work artistically for me. I'm a, I am a dramatist and I care about authenticity, so sometimes if you have a Chinese actor trying to speak in an English co-production, it doesn't work well, mm -hmm. and vice versa if you have an American actor speaking Chinese. It has to be balanced, and I've suggested things like love stories or true stories of intermingling of people mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. historical events have happened. Using body language instead of a linguistic language also, for a, yeah. uh, for but a love story. But also using the truth. Mm -hmm. now, uh, but what do you mean by it, truth? Well, the truth of events, this is what history is about. Mm -hmm. History is a search for the truth. Now, it's, we don't always agree on what the history is, but we agree that Japan invaded China. And it was a horrible time. And perhaps there's a story there with the United States involvement against Japan at the same time. We were allies, U.S. and China, against Japan. American school kids don't know some of that. They think that we've always been allied with Japan. So, you know, there is a potential co-production during World War II. Uh, then the, the issue of the Cultural Revolution is fascinating because there's some, so many people of your generation and my generation grew up in China and were faced with radical policies in the 1970s and survived those policies, survived the system. The system changed mm -hmm. and still changing and still evolving, maybe too fast as you suggested. But anyway, here is this amazing generation of our age who are alive and well in China and remember the past. I would love to know more about that. You know, many of those millions of Chinese kids and young people, including adults like me, are your super fans. I hope you can uh, go on with uh, your wonderful production of the Hollywood movies, uh, reflecting upon the history and the war. Thank you for being with us, okay. Mr. Stone. Thank we you, We do Ray. appreciate your time. Thank and you very much. Views. Thanks a lot, sir.